The blaze that damaged a large portion of the former Bassett Superior Lines building last Thursday is one of the largest structure fires to occur in Henry County in decades. Star News reporters were on the scene for the duration of the event, bringing breaking news updates deep into the night on Thursday, and we had an opportunity to speak with Henry County Fire Marshal Rodney Howell earlier today about the aftermath and the investigation. Compares right much to the J.D. Bassett fire. It was a large industrial complex, had a huge fire load, uh, and he had quite a few of the same problems that is water supply, personnel, getting the apparatus in the proper locations. And then of course you had a huge or large number of bystanders to deal with. Howell says he attributes the quick response and success in fighting the fire to the professionalism of area firefighters and emergency personnel. Most of that's training and the fact that uh, they immediately uh, recognize their objectives and uh, determined exactly what tactics they're going to use, such as location of the ladder trucks. Uh, one of the biggest problems they had once they had the ladder trucks was the uh, brush fires that continued to catch or ignite on the opposite side of the river. That became a problem. That took some resources. The fire was well managed. Um, you know, they rapidly or immediately established incident command and the command post. Uh, they divided the fire up into divisions uh, so that you can maintain accountability of personnel. And uh, it was all training um, from the top, from the chief, all the way down to the lowest responding firefighter. Howell says that although the damage was mostly confined to the portion of the building that was being demolished, there is still a huge loss in recyclable salvage, and these materials were not insurable. There's no insurance. You can't hardly get insurance on a building you're demolishing. They were demolishing the building, but they were also recycling the materials. The uh, wood uh, in this type of a structure is called a heavy timber construction, and it has large size wood, large dimensions, uh, and all of that is recyclable. It's uh, uh, rare wood. It's uh, sought after by quite a few companies, and uh, they estimated price to the value of that was a quarter of a million dollars. Plus, they had the uh, spray booths upstairs on the third floor, which they had already promised to be sold, and they were about $10,000, so it was right much lost there. Howell says that he will approach this investigation in much the same way as any other, but given the circumstances and the level of damage, he expects this to be quite a challenge. First of all, you gather your information, and that's what we're doing. We're using uh, film, uh, photographs. Uh, we're interviewing uh, witnesses, uh, such as the uh, owner of the company who's doing the demolition work, uh, some of his personnel, uh, some of the firefighters, some of the neighbors. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, we'll probably get into the building tomorrow morning and actually start doing, uh, trying to recreate some of the building. But uh, with the intensity of the fire and the amount of damage, plus the fact you now have three floors and a roof all laying in the first floor there, it's going to be a challenge. Howell says that no cause can be ruled out until the investigation is complete but at least initially, arson is not at the top of the list. Arson is the last thing you consider. Uh, first of all, you take all your evidence and data and assemble it and put it together. And if you can find any accidental cause that you cannot eliminate as being the reason for the fire, then and then and only then can you consider arson. It's the very last thing you look at. For Star News, I'm Scott Coleman reporting in Henry County, Virginia. Commonwealth Crossing is a joint Martinsville and Henry County economic development project that most community leaders believe will be highly beneficial to the future of the community. Interim City Manager Leon Toroniski tells us why he supports the project. Well, it, it's an investment in the future of our area. I mean, period. That's, that's what it is. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we've lost a lot of industry, we've lost a lot of jobs, and it, it does, it's not going to do us, it's not going to do this community any good to to sit here and, and wring our hands about, the, about what happened and, and what's gone and what was here and what's no longer here. However, not everyone agrees. City Councilman Danny Turner is the only local elected representative in the city or county who voted against the project. And uh, I've been opposed to Commonwealth Crossing as I think it's a bad investment. The uh, Commerce Department has agreed with me twice. Uh, but best case scenario, it's uh, 10, 15 years down the road before you get a dime out of that. and. Uh, we just don't have the funds. Torineski says the community must look to the future when developing projects such as Commonwealth Crossing and not dwell on past losses. We have to look at those things that we can 
that we have the ability to invest in and that we can invest in that's going to reap rewards for the for the community in the future and I think if when you look at it in that term in those terms and certainly things like you know the industrial sites uh, new college you know the new development they're talking about those are the types of things that's going to move this community from where it was to where it wants to go and where it needs to be and uh, I think as long as we can continue to focus on that and look at those as investments in the future of this community, uh, I think we'll be in good shape. For his part, Councilman Turner says he feels Commonwealth Crossing is a bad investment that may not be able to compete with another similar project under development in Pennsylvania County. You've got a mega park being built in Danville. Uh, number two, you have a lot of uh, excess capacity right around Martinsville. Uh, you have it's in North. Well, the entrance is in North Carolina, so the the argument that money turns over is 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 not there because the uh, majority of the money is going north, into North Carolina. We've got 500 acres over at Dupont, real accessible already. Uh, we're t we're looking at 17, 20 million dollars just to get, and we're only going to get two uh, rail accessible lots, uh, 20 million, and that's if we if the companies that come don't want incentive money, and you know how that works there. They're going to want a lot of incentive money. So uh, Commonwealth Cross, I think, was a bad investment. Toraniski, however, has a different perspective and mentions several aspects of the project that he believes make it a highly viable and competitive choice. Commonwealth Crossing, if you look at the, the, the location in respect to the city, the county, and, and surrounding areas, if you're on 220 South uh, from that location, you're 40 minutes, 45 minutes away from the, uh, from the Greensboro Airport the whole Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point area, which is just a tremendous uh, economic engine uh, in, in North Carolina, is just is within an hour away from that site. Uh, you know, rail siding at that location, which links you to those large areas, uh, which are, uh, you know, again, would make that site attractive, I think, for any, any big development that needs connections to for example, the airport and a, and a hub area like Greensboro and Winston-Salem. Toraniski also points to several key aspects of Commonwealth Crossing that he feels will make it highly beneficial to both the city and county and our community's joint economic future. Uh, Commonwealth Crossing is, is what's called a revenue sharing lot in that as that lot is developed and the, the development costs are recovered, then the city and the county would jointly recover or jointly would benefit from the, from the taxes that, that's generated off of that property. When those sites are developed, uh, to, at least to me or in my personal feelings, that's going to be a, a big key to the, to the continued growth of the city and the county because those, as those sites are, are going to be developed. Uh, there's going to be obviously new employment opportunities here in the community. They're going to generate a tax base. There's going to be you know the tr traditional things that you see from that type of development, uh, and it's going to grow the local economy, which is certainly something that's going to benefit the whole community. And I know there is an expense to do that, uh, but as as you would look at an investment in the future, that's the way we would need to look at that and and to characterize it in that manner. Uh, you know, ultimately, it, the good thing is going to happen on those sites, and it's going to be good for the community. For Star News, I'm Scott Coleman reporting.